So what is internet marketing and why should you care? Well, internet marketing simply entails promoting your business on the web. Any marketing activity that is carried out online is considered internet marketing, and that includes search engine optimization, otherwise known as SEO, content marketing, social media marketing, PPC advertising, influencer marketing, press releases, email marketing, and more. These various pillars of internet marketing can each help you to bring more visitors to a website or a blog, and that in turn gives you the opportunity to promote your business and hopefully drive conversions, in other words, turning visitors into customers. What makes internet marketing so effective is that it doesn't have to cost a huge amount to be successful. Now, you can spend an awful lot on SEO and content marketing and thereby try to get your site to the top of Google, but sometimes it just takes one smartly placed link to drive huge amounts of traffic to your site. And if you're willing to put in consistent time and effort, then anyone can build a massive loyal audience then thereby become a big influencer in their niche. Thus, internet marketing is the great equalizer. Marketing no longer requires a huge budget. It's now something that you can do just as well as the largest corporations, as long as you're smart with it. Internet marketing has other advantages too. It allows you to actually engage with your audience, for instance. Using social media or running contests means that you're able to interact with the very customers you're trying to obtain and get feedback from them. Then there's the simple fact that the web is capable of reaching such a huge audience, including people from all around the world. If you're selling something with international shipping, then this is by far the best way to reach a global audience. For all these reasons, internet marketing is for everyone. No matter what type of business you're running, you should be able to benefit from internet marketing and find that it can help you to increase your brand visibility, grow your audience and to make bigger profits. Now, some businesses are only able to exist thanks to internet marketing. These are the entirely online businesses, such as people who sell ebooks. Now, ebooks are digital products with no overheads. By marketing them correctly, it's possible to make huge amount of sales which will be almost entirely profit. Ebooks can be something of a hard sell, but the fact that you can reach such a massive audience and engage with them directly means you can get enough turnover to earn big profits. These businesses only exist thanks to internet marketing. Other businesses also rely heavily on internet marketing. If you sell a service online, such as web design or copywriting, then using internet marketing will allow you to ensure that the maximum number of potential clients see your website and consider hiring your services. Knowing how to reach that audience online is the difference between long dry spells, where you aren't bringing in any cash, and a steady flow of orders and income. Of course, the same is also true for an e-commerce business, which exists to turn website visitors into paying customers in a similar way. Amazon actually spends over $1 million a day on Google AdWords alone, which shows you just how much the company values its internet marketing. But it's not just online businesses that can benefit from internet marketing. Big brands like Coca-Cola, Red Bull, Marvel, Ford, Best Buy, they all spend huge amounts on internet marketing because they know that it is now more effective than spending that same money on print media or television. And the same goes for small businesses like hairdressers, restaurants and high street stores, and sole traders like plumbers, builders and lawyers. As we will see, Anyone can benefit from internet marketing, and it is the single most efficient way to increase footfall for your company. The only thing holding most people back, of course, is the simple fact that they don't know how to go about internet marketing. They don't understand how SEO works, they're not sure how to reach influencers, and they find social media awkward. If you find yourself in that situation, then don't worry. This video series is going to teach you everything you need to know in order to develop any kind of internet marketing campaign with confidence. 
best of all, we'll help you to learn to create smart internet marketing campaigns, the kinds that get maximum results with the least amount of cash and time. We just said that Amazon spends a million dollars a day on AdWords, and that might make you wonder how on earth you're supposed to compete. The answer? Well, you're not. Our aim is not to take on huge corporations head to head, but rather to find the path of least resistance, to identify those corners of the web where lots of potential customers are waiting and no one is currently marketing to them. You're going to learn how to do that and much more over the course of this series. Specifically, you'll learn how to choose a niche and find your audience, how to create a stunning website in no time at all, how to drive conversions so that visitors equal customers, how to climb the ranks of Google using smart SEO, how to provide value through a blog and become a thought leader in your industry. How to build and run a mailing list. How to create a thriving and popular social media channel. How to write stunning articles and killer sales scripts. How to use press releases, video sales letters, sales pages and other tools. How to work with other internet marketers. How to create your online business and a whole lot more. So let's get down to it. And we'll do that in the next video. As we saw in the last video, internet marketing is for everyone and can apply to many different types of businesses. For the purposes of these videos though, we're going to broadly categorize viewers into two groups those with an existing business they want to promote, and those wanting to set up an online business or make money directly through internet marketing. And for now, we're going to concentrate on the second group. If you already have a business, this is still worth watching, but if you're in a rush to get to the good stuff, fast forward to the section on website creation. If your plan is to build an entirely online business and to make money either directly from a blog or perhaps by selling digital products, then the first thing you need to do is to choose a niche, or niche as some people pronounce it. The term niche in this context essentially refers to a subject matter, an industry and an audience. In other words, a niche can be health or it can be knitting. This is what your blog is going to be about, it's what the products you sell should be about, and it will determine precisely who your business is marketed at. Choosing your niche is one of the most important steps in creating a successful online business. And the reason for this is that it will directly impact the amount of competition as well as the size of your audience. So if your subject is health, then you're going to be going up against millions of other websites and this is going to make your life very difficult indeed. When you write a blog post on how to get abs, it's going to be incredibly difficult to get that to the top of Google, seeing as there are so many other blog posts on getting abs. Likewise, if you post in a fitness forum and mention your ebook, it's not going to stand out or be interesting because there are so many others. Conversely though, you also need to avoid choosing a niche that is too narrow. If the niche you chose is earwigs as pets, then it will only be a matter of time before you've marketed to the majority of that audience and there's no one left to buy from you. Another important consideration when choosing a niche is what you can offer the audience and how much they are likely to spend. When creating a product, it's always useful to think in terms of the value proposition. Now, this basically refers to what your product is offering to the buyer and what gives it its value, which should be much greater than the face value. When you sell an ebook on getting fit, for example, the value proposition comes from the fact that your buyer will hopefully be much fitter after reading your book and applying the knowledge that they learn. So you're not really selling a book at all, but rather a sexy toned body. You're selling confidence, you're selling energy first thing in the morning, and you're selling physical attractiveness to the opposite sex. And people are willing to pay for a lot of things, meaning that you can afford to charge more for your ebook. 
On the other hand, if you have a book on cats, then you can only charge people for learning a bit more about their pets, which isn't something people are willing to pay as much for. It's also important to have a very clear target audience in mind. Draw up a buyer persona and think about the exact kind of person who will be interested in your product. Do they have enough disposable income? And do you know where you can reach them in order to market your product? If all that sounds a bit confusing, then the best way to pick a niche is often to find a very big and popular niche with a strong value proposition, and we're talking things like fitness, finance, business, dating, and so on, and then to narrow down to find a specific section within that niche. So, for example, you might have fitness for the over 50s, fitness for nerds, and as a sidebar, nerdfitness.com is a highly popular website. You could have fitness for X condition, whatever you want to put in. Fitness for martial artists, online businesses for students, making money online for stay-at-home mums. You know, the list just goes on and on. And try and think of something that is as original as possible, while at the same time making sure that there's a big audience there and that you can solve a specific need. At the same time, though, try and choose a niche that you genuinely have an interest in and some knowledge about, and this will help you to write better blog posts and it will ensure that you don't get bored of your business over time. And this is actually one of the most important tips, so don't be motivated by money alone or you're likely to find your business lacks staying power. Finally, think about any connections you might already have and any contacts. If you happen to know the editor of Gardening Magazine, then creating a business in the gardening niche just makes sense. Likewise, if you're a prominent member of a big forum dealing with health, then this is a very logical niche to choose as you'll be able to post about your blog there and hopefully get a big reaction. In short, try to have an entire business plan ready before you even begin writing. Know your strategy, know your end game, and let your niche dictate all that. The next thing you need to do is to create a stunning website. Now, this is highly important as your website is what's going to create the first impressions for your visitors and give them the confidence to buy from you. Now, this makes all the difference. Think about your own experience, whether you're looking online for a place to eat, for a specific product to buy, or a blog to read. If the website is well designed, then the chances are that you'll feel comfortable there. If the font is large and crisp, then it will be pleasant for people to read. If the logo is well designed and high definition, then it will create trust for your brand. If the navigation is simple and fluid, then visitors will be able to find their way around the site. And if the buy now button looks official and secure, then people will be much more comfortable entering their payment details. How many times have you loaded up a website to get some information or to order food only to be immediately put off by the dated design and leap? Now, don't let this be the experience that your visitors have of your website. Make sure that it looks clean and professional and don't accept anything that is less impressive than the very top players in your niche. If you want to be taken seriously, then that is what it takes. So, how do you go about creating such a website? Well, the good news is that these days it's very easy with WordPress. WordPress is, of course, a content management system and site building tool. You install it on your server, and this is usually available through the tools provided by your hosting provider, or you can download the files from here at wordpress.org. Be sure to come to wordpress.org, not wordpress.com. Wordpress.com is where they host the site for you. And then you'll be able to log into a back end and choose a theme and layout while adding posts and features easily. And WordPress is by far the most popular tool today for building websites, and it powers many of the biggest brands on the net. For example, some of the BBC websites run on WordPress, as do the blogs that Forbes magazine hosts. And Wired also is run by WordPress. 
and it's free and it has a huge number of different features. It has support from a massive online community and nearly endless customizability. In other words, there really is no reason not to use WordPress. It's a tried and tested commodity and it makes things quicker and faster for you while still resulting in a highly professional looking end product. Now, once you've installed WordPress, you should then look into adding a professional looking theme. Now, thankfully, these can also be added very simply by looking at the themes available through WordPress itself or by buying them from various theme stores. And a good one is themeforest.net. And you can see here they've got, at the time of making this video, 31,056 website templates and themes. And as you can see here, prices start at around $2. So it's well worth a visit. A professional looking theme with good customization options will generally set you back about $40. And this is a very worthwhile investment as it can make your site considerably more professional looking, help it to stay responsive so that it fits the size of the display that's being viewed on, and generally ensure that it's polished and able to compete with those top players. You also need a great logo, which will help you to brand your business and will give you more marketing options. A good logo needs to be unique. It needs to encapsulate what your business is all about. You know, try to communicate the value proposition if you can. And it needs to be crisp and high definition to look professional. If you create your logo yourself, then it's very important that you use vector files via software like Adobe Illustrator in order to make it look the part. Better yet, outsource this job to someone else. Consider using 99designs, which is 99designs.com, or if you're in the UK like me, it'll redirect you to 99designs.co.uk, or perhaps Fiverr, which is Fiverr with two R's.com. There are many different aspects to good internet marketing, which include SEO, press releases, social media marketing, influencer marketing and more. Once upon a time, internet marketing could mean simply picking one of these facets, such as SEO, and then trying to spam it until a site got to the top of Google and started getting thousands of views. Today though, this method just doesn't work and in fact is much more likely to get you penalized by Google. Today, the only way to succeed online is by delivering quality, and the best way to do that is by updating your blog regularly. This is the central tenant of content marketing, and as you'll see, content marketing can provide the backbone of your entire digital marketing strategy. So just what is content marketing? Well, essentially, Content marketing means that you're going to promote your website via content and you're going to use this to bring more people to your website and get them to engage with your brand. People are not going to visit your website or blog out of the goodness of their heart. They will go there because they're looking for something and that something will normally be content. People use the web to find information for entertainment or for news, all of which means content. Your core strategy is going to be publishing content on a blog regularly and using this as a way to gradually bring in more and more visitors. Eventually, this should allow you to establish trust and authority within your niche and build up a big following of regular readers who want to find your content. Your content is also what you're going to use to succeed in the various other types of internet marketing. Over the next few videos, you'll see how content is essential for SEO as well as for social media. And that's because content is what people are searching for on Google and it's what you will mainly share on social media. But the aim is not to bring people to your site in the short term to make sales. Rather, your aim is to get people to subscribe to your site, to bookmark it and to read it regularly. The way this works is simple. First, a visitor finds your site on Google or via a social media post. The article looks and sounds interesting. They read it and hopefully they have a good experience. 
But that's not going to lead to a sale, and it's not going to lead to a subscriber in most cases. Rather, they will just make a mental note that your site was reliable and interesting, and so if they see a post from you again on their travels, they will be more likely to read it next time. It's important that your branding and web design is strong, and this will ensure that they recognize the fact that they're returning to a website that they've already been to once before. Eventually, you'll get to the point where they have a question and they decide to turn to you for advice. They know you're reliable. They know they enjoy the way that you write, and so it makes sense that they'll seek you out when they want to know something. At this point, you have their trust, and it will be much easier for you to persuade them to make a purchase or to read your site regularly. Eventually, they'll become regular subscribers, and they'll start actively looking into whatever you're posting next. This will mean you have a captive audience, and the next time you want to sell a product, you'll be able to. And no, this strategy is not just for online businesses or eBooks. This strategy can likewise work for a high street store or a hairdressing company. It's all about getting more people to read your content regularly, so that you have built that audience and that trust. Of course, some internet marketing strategies might rely less on content marketing than others, but this is an activity that every business should be engaged in, and it all revolves around providing value for free. That may sound great, but the next question is: How are you going to go about doing this? How do you go about adding content to your site that is so exciting that people will want to read your site on a daily basis, you know, especially if you aren't a writer naturally? Well, the first thing is to understand the type of content that gets read and the type of content that gets shared. And a clue here lies in a term that is generally looked down upon by the community: clickbait. Clickbait is content designed to get people to click, and very often it provides little to no value. You'll probably have seen this type of content on Facebook, and these are posts with titles like "You'll never believe what happens next" or "Top 10 X Number Seven Will Shock You." These titles get people to click by leveraging the power of curiosity. The titles are purposefully vague while also being emotionally charged, you know, by telling you that you'll be shocked or outraged in some way. To look at, the articles appear to offer something completely new, unexpected, and shocking. Unfortunately, when we click on the links, very often we are met with something rather disappointing, and the reality fails to live up to the hype. Now, I'm not about to tell you to write clickbait content. But what I am going to do is to tell you to write content that is similarly shocking and interesting. What you must absolutely avoid are titles like "10 Great Ab Exercises" or "SEO for Beginners." These titles are contrived. We've all heard similar things countless times before, and they just fail to stand out or to look exciting. Your aim is to write something as intriguing and as shocking as a clickbait title, but then to actually deliver on the promise by making sure that the reality is every bit as impressive as what you were promising in the title. So instead of ten great ab exercises, how about what happens if you do one hundred sit-ups every night, or anatomy of your abs, the ab muscles you didn't know you had, and how to train them. Instead of SEO for beginners, how about the psychological impact of making dollar 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 online, or how I make two hundred dollars a day from a site I built last year? These titles are inherently more interesting because they're different, because they have a human element, and because they promise real value. If you use those kinds of titles, you'll get clicks, especially if you post them to the right forums. And if you deliver great value within your content, people will eventually start seeking you out for more unique and exciting stories. Oh, and stories is a very key word here. People love stories. Giving any post a narrative structure, in other words, structuring like a story, and talking about real people who have been affected by your advice is one of the best ways to ensure that people will want to read your content. Some other tips: 
space out your content well and avoid large chunks of text. Use lots of highly descriptive headings that will inform your readers as to what each chapter is about. Use a nice big font. Decorate your content with attractive images. Write in a manner that is concise, entertaining and easy to read. And provide lots of links to other resources within your content. From there, it's simply a matter of posting consistently, and I mean at least once a week, ideally more, and keeping the quality high. The length of each post doesn't matter as much, but occasionally posting long-form posts, uh, that I mean 800 words plus, will stand you in good stead with Google and help you to provide even more content to your visitors. But what if you don't know how to write? What if English isn't your first language? In that case, you need to consider hiring a writer. There are lots of writers online and they charge anywhere from $1 per 100 words to $10 per 100 words. You don't need to spend that much, but it's highly recommended that you avoid the very cheapest writers. You know, anything under $1.50 is risky and that you pay for better quality content. This is an important investment as you won't be able to build trust and find regular readers if your content is written in Pidgin English. One concern here is that you might not know how to check if the content is good, seeing as you won't be able to read it in the native language. The solution here is to find someone who can tell the difference and to get them to check it for you. And I can't stress enough how important this is. The key to effective social media marketing is the exact same as the key to effective content marketing, providing value. Unfortunately, this is something that a huge number of businesses have absolutely no idea how to do, and that results in some very poorly managed social media. Take a look at the social media pages of your typical local B2B companies and you'll find that they tend to post some rather uninspiring and vapid statuses and posts. You'll see things like, find out why our content management solution is the best in the business. And order our EPOS system today and start serving your customers better. Well, this is nothing but blatant self-promotion and not even interesting self-promotion. You know, ask yourself, why would anyone be interested in following that? What are they gaining by reading your posts? One of the single most important questions to ask when looking at your social media or your content is, would you read it? If not, then you need to do something to make it more interesting. This means your social media now needs to provide some kind of purpose for the viewer. It should be interesting, it should be entertaining, and it should be useful or it should be inspiring. Inspiring social media can work particularly well. Take a look at Instagram and you'll find lots of accounts filled with people wearing stunning clothes, posing to show off their rippling muscles or even just showing off their wealthy lifestyle. Then there are the travel accounts with lots of pictures of beautiful mountain ranges and sunsets. Why do these work? Well, because people see those channels and feel inspired. They live vicariously through them and enjoy daydreaming about having a life like that. They know that if they follow that account, they'll be shown many more similarly inspiring posts and they continue to live the dream. And guess what? When you then promote a piece of clothing or an ebook on how to get fit, they listen. Examples of popular Facebook pages are things like IFL Science, which posts links to articles with some really eye-catching titles and gets tons of likes and tons of shares as a result. The best Twitter accounts are ones run by personal brands that let fans feel as though they're really getting to know them with insights into their daily routines, with jokes or with insider tips. Want to make a splash on Pinterest? Then how about creating a board to show off life hacks or to demonstrate great outfit choices or workout inspiration? The aim again is to provide real value and the way to know if you're doing this well is to ask yourself, 
would people be disappointed if you stopped posting to your account? Not just your blog, but your social media channels. Your social media needs to be able to stand on its own two feet and be something people enjoy in its own right. That's how you gain followers and shares, and it's how you get people to visit your site and buy your products. Once again, from there the key is to post regularly and to be consistently on topic. Don't create a blog on fitness, but continuously post on social media about your love of gardening, or people will get tired and leave. How frequently should this be? Well, ideally, the more frequently you post, the better. Several times a day is generally recommended, especially since the likes of Facebook will only show each post to a small percentage of your followers. Now let's look at some more tips for getting your social media right. One thing you might be wondering is how you can provide this kind of entertaining, engaging value when you run a website about life insurance. You know, what could you possibly do on Instagram or Pinterest that would be appropriate? Well, the answer is not to think about the service directly, but rather about the value proposition and the audience. Your aim is to post things that will be interesting to the same demographic and will be relevant, but this doesn't have to mean you only ever post directly about life insurance. One example of this might be to make an Instagram account about all the ways to spend time with your family and take care of them as a mum and dad. This has a very broad appeal, but it's also directly relevant to life insurance because, after all, life insurance is all about looking after your family once you're gone. People who want to be better mums and dads can follow your Instagram, which will be in the same spirit as your business. And once you have their ear, you can recommend life insurance policy X. Likewise, you could do something similar with a Pinterest account. Now, how about making all this about ways to save money as a family? You could show money-saving hacks, budgeting tips, etc., and use that to promote your life insurance as the best financial option or your website as the best place to learn about life insurance. Another important tip is to think about your audience and who they are. If you want people to share your posts, and this is the best way to ensure they reach the maximum number of people, then you need to be sure you're targeting your audience specifically. This is important, seeing as trying to reach too wide an audience will ultimately mean that you don't specifically appeal to anyone. This is the mistake a lot of people make with their posts on how to get abs. They think that they need to appeal to everyone, and thus they end up with very safe and very generic content. But content performs best when it's targeting specifically at a particular type of person. This all relates to the psychology of sharing. Why do we ever share content? Well, there are two simple reasons. To express ourselves or to communicate. We communicate by sharing things that we think will appeal to someone we know. If you see a post on how working from home turns your brain to mush, then you're going to share that with your friend Bill who works from home as a cheeky joke, as a way to help them work from home better, or perhaps just a way to show that you're thinking of them. If you work from home yourself, then you might post it to express how you feel about working from home and to help others understand you better. But notice that in both scenarios, the post only works because it applies so specifically to people who work from home. While being very specific might appear to exclude potential customers, it makes it much easier for you to market to a particular type of person who is likely to buy from you. And to make this work, you need to spend some time profiling what that person is like. How old are they? What gender are they? What are their hobbies? What websites do they spend time on? You'll see why this is even more important shortly. Once you've decided how you're going to provide value through sharing your blog posts or by posting images, you'll then need to make sure you have a strong brand that will have some good visibility and tie your social media channels neatly to your website. 
it's important that when someone sees a post from you, they know it's from the same website that they saw the other day. So make sure you have a good logo and use that as your profile picture or your cover image on each account. Likewise, use the same name wherever possible. Another tip is to integrate your social media and your website as closely as possible. It'll take a while to build up momentum on your social media, but one thing that you can do to help that along is to add social media buttons to your website so that people can check out your Facebook page directly from your website. Ideally, you'll gain new followers each time someone goes to your website. That way, they'll be more likely to see your future posts and share them, bringing in yet more visitors who can subsequently become followers. Also important is simply to ask people to follow you on social media. This is particularly effective in videos, so if you have a YouTube channel, then don't be shy to simply ask the people watching to follow you on Twitter and give them some good reasons to do so. Similarly, at the end of a blog post, why not just ask your readers to share the post with their friends using the handy sharing buttons that you provide? It's also a good idea to integrate your various different posts to save time and to ensure that you fill each channel with as much content as possible. For example, you can make it so that you post all your tweets on your Facebook page or that each new YouTube video is automatically shared on Twitter. Don't forget that social media is still primarily a communication tool. One of the best ways to ensure people are engaged with you is to actually talk with them and to do something as simple as just following people or liking their pictures. If you've ever used Instagram, then you'll be familiar with how pleasing it is that someone has started following you, especially if they look like a professional brand. Likewise, it's great when they comment and say, nice pic. This will motivate you to check out their channel and, in many cases, to follow it. So just spend some time posting and, of course, be sure to actually respond to people. Running contests and surveying your audience can also be a very good way to increase engagement and to get a better idea of what your followers want to see from you. A good example of a contest is to award a follower with a free gift if you get over X number of likes. This can help you to build more shares and likes, as well as being a great way to thank your fans. Now it's time to look at one of the biggest pillars of internet marketing of all, SEO. SEO is search engine optimization, and this basically means that you're trying to get your website to show up in the search results. Of course, you're not going to be able to show up high in every search result, so this is where keywords and targeting come in. A keyword is essentially a word or phrase that people are going to search in order to find your site. When people go shopping online, they'll almost always start with Google. And when they start with Google, they will begin by searching for the thing that they want. It very often, this will mean that they search for something like buy hats online. If you can target that precise phrase, so that your page is the top result. You will not only be able to reach the right demographic, but you'll be able to target them at the precise moment they're actually planning on buying something. The same thing happens when someone looks for information. They might search for how to lose weight after Christmas, or they might search for fitness articles. Again, you can bring more people to your site and that way, hopefully create more loyal followers simply by making sure your pages come up as top results for those terms. So SEO has the huge advantage of being highly targeted and allowing you to reach anyone rather than just people who are your followers or who are part of the same network as your followers. The only problem is that SEO is also arguably more complicated than the other forms of marketing we've looked at so far. It's never guaranteed. That is to say you can spend years doing SEO or pay the very biggest SEO service in the world and still not see any improvements. Let's take a look at why that is and how to give yourself the best chance of success. In order to get to the top of Google, 
The aim is to try and understand how Google works, how Google decides which sites are worthwhile, and how you can manipulate those factors in order to move your site to the top. Google works using spiders or robots. These are small programs that search the web by following from one link to the next. Each time they find a new website, they add it to a giant index and will assess the subject matter and the quality of the site by looking at who is linking to the page, how the page is laid out and what the subject of the content appears to be. If we knew precisely how Google's algorithm worked, then we could get to the top of the search results with guaranteed certainty. As we don't know this though, all we can do is make educated guesses and hope that these get us to the top of Google. When Google first became the dominant search engine, the algorithm was fairly straightforward and was generally quite well understood by marketers. Back then we knew that Google found sites by following links on sites already in the index. Google thought of a link as testimony. The more people link into your site, the better your site must be. Google attempted to match search terms with the content on your pages. If you repeated the same phrase often enough, you stood a better chance of ranking for that term. Back then, it was easy enough to manipulate Google into doing your bidding. All you had to do was to create a website with lots and lots of content, repeat the same keywords over and over again, and get lots of other sites to link to you. It was literally a matter of whoever worked the fastest could get to the top of Google the quickest. Unfortunately, though, this also led to some very bad practices. People would stuff keywords into their text, repeating the same few phrases over and over again. People would pay for links. People would steal content and spin it, you know, swap words for synonyms, and generally, Google's results started to become dominated by spam. So, Google clamped down and introduced some smarter rules and algorithms. These updates to its system were known as Penguin and Panda and really shook up the internet marketing community. Now Google is much smarter when it comes to looking for content and now values quality over quantity to a large degree. A few examples of the changes. First off, Google will now penalize websites for keyword stuffing. A density of 1-2% to is generally recommended. Google now prefers long-form content and will reward it. Google will penalize sites that associate with spam sites. Low-quality links are worthless. Links from established authorities mean much more. A single link from Harvard is worth a million links from spam sites. Google now understands synonyms and related terms and will look for you to have written around a subject. Google penalizes links that are from sites that aren't related to yours. Google clamps down hard on paid links. Google clamps down hard on stolen or reworked content. Google can now monitor how long people spend on a website or page. If your visitors are only staying for a second before leaving, Google will take this to mean that your site doesn't offer any real value and you will be penalized. This sudden change resulted in a lot of sites being removed from Google altogether, which badly hurt many businesses. As you can imagine, this caused quite a lot of outcry. But what's important to remember is that website owners are not the customers Google is catering to. Google is catering to users who want to use Google in order to find high-quality content. Thus, Google's main and only objective is to ensure that the content it shares is relevant and interesting to the people searching for it. So, what's the best way to handle good SEO? Simple. Make sure you are providing great, relevant content. When you do this, you are aligning yourself with Google's goals. Therefore, every change Google makes will ultimately help more people to find your site. Meanwhile, the sites that try to spam Google or trick it will only be damaged each time that Google has an update. So, with all that said, how do you go about carrying out SEO for your site in this day and age? 
We'll cover that in part two. With what we covered in the last video, you may be wondering whether it really is possible to get your site ranked now. How do you go about carrying out SEO for your site in this day and age? Well, let's take a look at some modern SEO practices. The first thing to do is to fill your site with as much relevant content as possible. Notice how SEO and content marketing naturally go hand in hand already? Again, this content should be long form, at least occasionally, and should contain links to other sites. Again, the same things that make your content high quality for your readers are the things that Google wants to see. Do some keyword research to find what people are searching for and what you should try to target to get the ideal traffic to your site. You can find the volume of people searching for specific terms by using Google's Keyword Planner. Come here to adwords.google.com forward slash Keyword Planner and then sign in using your Google ID. It's all very straightforward. Try to make sure that the terms you search for aren't too competitive, however. Otherwise, you can end up going against too many other sites and giving yourself an impossible task. As mentioned earlier, Google just doesn't like you to keep repeating the same key phrase over and over. Instead, the objective is to lace it into the content a few times as naturally as possible while also including synonyms and related terminology. This should happen naturally and it should never distract the reader. From here, you can go about building links from high quality relevant sites. These are certain sites that Google already trusts and you can spot these by looking at which ones are already at the top of Google and which ones are featured in Google News. Google also likes big recognized brands and it likes .edu and .org domains. While it might be hard to get links from those sites, you can think of this a bit like degrees of separation. In other words, if you can't get a link from Harvard University, Look for a site that does have a link from Harvard and see if you can't get a link from them. One of the best strategies you can use to build links is something called guest posting. Here, you're essentially going to contact big blogs and offer to write content for them for free. This content needs to be relevant and high quality, so they will be tempted to go ahead and publish it. Rather than charging for your writing, what you then do is make it part of the deal that you will get a link back to your website within the body of the text. One way to avoid going head to head with the biggest players in your niche is to focus on local SEO. Local SEO is simply SEO that places local keywords front and center. So if you live in Santa Monica and you run a hairdresser, then you would try to rank for Santa Monica hairdresser and you will build links from other local companies. It's much easier to become number one for a specific search term like this. Even if you're running an international business, it can be a good idea to start local and then branch out once you've built a local momentum. Lastly, a few things that can help to keep you in Google's good books. Avoid anything that looks spammy or manipulative. Try to avoid patterns and encourage your visitors to share your links online. That's what Google really likes to see, sites with lots of links on the strength of their quality. One way to do this is to write link bait. This is content that is so useful, so interesting or so shocking that other people want to link to it and include it in their debates or share it with friends. When creating your links, Avoid trying to use only your keywords in the anchor text. Sometimes the best anchor is just click here or this article. Again, it looks more organic and natural and means Google won't think that you're paying for your links. Now, don't try and trick Google. Just create high quality content for your readers while keeping Google's algorithms in the back of your mind. One of the great things about SEO is that once you've climbed to the top, it doesn't have to cost you all that much to stay there. The problem is it can take an awfully long time to get to that point. 
PPC, meanwhile, offers you the precise opposite strengths and weaknesses. PPC stands for pay-per-click and is the main form of advertising online. Pay-per-click essentially means that as an advertiser, you only get charged each time somebody actually clicks on one of your adverts. So, in other words, it doesn't cost you anything to have your advert published on a website. If no one ever clicks on it, you'll never pay a cent. But each time someone does click on it, you'll be charged X amount of money. This has a lot of handy advantages, as do many of the other features of PPC. So let's dive in and take a closer look. So how much exactly do you pay for each click? And where will your ads show? What's the best way to make the most money from it? Well, essentially, you get to decide precisely how much you want to pay for each click. The caveat is, the less you pay, the less your advert will get seen. That's because ads are shown based on a bidding system. Whenever a space becomes live, all of the relevant ads will be compared and the one that pays the highest will get shown. That means you can get clicks for one cent if you're in a niche with zero competition, but for a much more competitive industry, you can end up paying as much as $5 per click. The good news is you only pay the amount you need to beat the next highest competition. So if your maximum bid is $5, but there's only one competitor who's paying $1, you'll get the ad for $1 and one cent. As well as setting how much you're willing to pay, which is known as your minimum bid, you can also set how much you're willing to pay per week or per month. This is your budget, and by setting this, you can ensure that you never spend more cash than you have. The great thing about this system is it means you can actually guarantee ROI for your business. You do this by calculating how much it's going to cost you to bring each new visitor to your site which will be equal to your CPC, or cost per click. You then look at your conversion rate, in other words, what percentage of new visitors become paying customers, and then you compare these numbers. So if one in every 100 visitors buys something from you, in other words, a 1% conversion rate, and your product earns you $50 per sale, that means each visitor is worth $50 divided by 100, or 50 cents. As long as you're paying less than that per click, you should earn profit from the campaign. This also means you'll need a daily budget of a certain amount in order to see daily returns. There is another great benefit to PPC advertising too. It allows you to target specific types of visitors very precisely. Targeting means ensuring only people you really want to see your ads will see them, and that can prevent you from wasting money advertising to people who won't be interested in buying from you. If you're selling skateboards to skaters, you should find your conversion rate goes up significantly versus trying to sell pens to skaters. So, how does all this work? Well, there are two main PPC programs out there at the moment. These are Facebook ads, and Google AdWords. There are some others, but they aren't so big. Google AdWords show ads on search terms, and in that way it works just like SEO. Your aim here is to make sure that you're paying for your ads to show up on search terms with enough viewers and that are targeted to your precise audience. You can do this using local search terms again, or you can do it by using search terms that specifically relate to your niche. And you can see the ads are here at the top where it says ad. Quite often, they'll also have them down here on the right-hand side in a search result as well. Now, Facebook ads, on the other hand, gives you even more targeting options. With Facebook ads, your adverts will show on users' Facebook pages on the right or in their home feeds. You can then ensure that people only see the ads if they are the right age and sex, or if they have the right hobbies and interests, or have the right income, and if they're in the right location. Google has the advantage of showing ads to people who are currently searching for services and products, whereas Facebook ads can be interruptive. You can even use Google AdWords as a way to test whether certain keywords are worth pursuing with your SEO. 
But by closely targeting only people who are likely to be interested in your product, Facebook ads allow you to avoid wasting money on clicks from people who would never have bought from you in the first place. If you're selling a digital product, there is another very effective way to gain a lot more sales, and that is to get other marketers to promote it for you. And learning about affiliate marketing is important if you want to stand a lot of the conversation you'll find in marketing forums and elsewhere. Essentially, an affiliate is someone who promotes an online product in exchange for a commission. So if you sold an ebook for 40% commission, that would make you an affiliate. To do this, you simply use a URL that is unique to you, and then when someone clicks on that link, they will be redirected via a page that will have a cookie on their computer, and they will be identified as having been sent by you. The great thing about getting affiliates to help you promote a product is you're essentially building an army of salespeople, all of whom will be able to help you get more sales for your product. If you can sell 30 ebooks a month yourself, imagine how many ebooks you'll sell when you have a thousand affiliates. The key to getting lots of affiliates is not to be greedy. Create a great product you know will sell well and that affiliates will believe in too, and then be willing to give away a good proportion of your profits, over 50% ideally. You can then look for affiliates by listing your product on affiliate networks like JVZoo, which is jvzoo.com, ClickBank, which is clickbank.com, or CJ Affiliate by Conversant. This used to be called Commission Junction, and you can find them at cj.com. Making money as an affiliate is also a very important strategy for internet marketers. Internet marketers make money by promoting the products of other creators. This allows them to make big money without having to invest lots of time or effort into creating their own products. What's more is that by selecting an existing product rather than making one from scratch, you can remove the risk element by focusing on a product that is already selling very well. Affiliate marketing is a great way to monetize a website and to build a business with zero upfront investment. Whether you are an affiliate or a product creator, you're going to find there are a few different materials and terms which come up regularly and that you'll end up using to build your campaign. These materials and terms include Sales Funnel. Now, a sales funnel is a selection of free blog posts or articles, perhaps a mailing list, maybe a free report, followed up by a paid report and increasingly high ticket, in other words, expensive items. The idea is that you're gradually introducing people to your brand and then helping them to invest more and more in your message to become increasingly interested in spending more with you. Then there's sales page. A sales page is a page which is entirely dedicated to selling your product. That means there will be no external links, no distracting content or images, you know, just one sales script designed to promote the product and make it sound highly desirable. This will be interspersed with buy now buttons and will use persuasive writing. Then there's free report, and a free report is a small excerpt or example of your sales funnel. There's VSL, and VSL is a video sales letter. This is a spoken script that works like sales copy to engage the visitor and get them to buy. And finally, there are squeeze page and email swipes. Now, email swipes are ready-made marketing messages. We'll look a little more at how a squeeze page and mailing list work together in a moment. As a marketer, you can either create these materials yourself, get them free when you sign up as an affiliate, or use other strategies to promote the products. Either way though, understanding these terms is going to come in very handy when you're learning about internet marketing. It's worth understanding this concept, as, like I said, it comes up a lot in forums and online communities. In fact, for many people, internet marketing and affiliate marketing are somewhat inseparable. 
You'll find this when you check out sites like Black Hat World, which is blackhatworld.com, and the Warrior Forum, which is warriorforum.com. These are forums where internet marketers can discuss ideas and tips with one another, as well as finding opportunities, business partners, clients and services. The Warrior Forum even has its own affiliate network. Spending some time on these forums is a very good way to get acquainted with the world of internet marketing and all it entails. You'll also find a ton of good advice, as well as being able to hire writers, SEO companies, web designers and other professionals to help you get your campaign up and running. Here, you will often find lots of people selling link building services, but you should be wary of these as the links are often low quality. Spend some time here though, learn the ropes and find out what it really means to be an internet marketer. There are many, many more aspects to internet marketing and we only really have just scratched the surface. That said, you should now know all of the basics and have a deeper understanding than most people regarding what is actually likely to work versus what ultimately amounts to spam. Before we go though, there are just a few more concepts you need to familiarize yourself with. If someone lands on your site for the first time and you try to sell them a copy of your ebook or a service, you should expect to find that this is more likely than anything to just drive them away. Think of it a little bit like asking for someone's number before they've even had a chance to get to know you. Much more successful is to spend some time establishing trust and familiarity. But you do need to ensure that they come back in order to do that. And this is where a mailing list comes in. It gives you a way to contact your visitors directly and, more importantly, it represents permission to message them. Your objective then is to ensure your members actually keep reading your mailing list rather than ignoring your messages. In order to do that, you need to ensure that you are, you guessed it, providing value. Emails can be lessons, they can be exclusive updates, or they can be full articles. Just make sure that they are providing value. In order to start collecting emails and sending them out, you'll need a tool called an autoresponder. This is what will enable you to create forms as well as letting you manage new subscribers, people who want to leave your list, etc, etc. Good examples of autoresponder services include Aweber, which you can find here at aweber.com, GetResponse, which is getresponse.co.uk in the UK and getresponse.com everywhere else, and mailchimp.com. Don't ignore this aspect of your marketing. You know, many gurus suggest that this is the most effective tool in your arsenal. Press releases are short documents you send out to big bloggers and websites. The idea is to make your website or your product sound like news so that they will consider writing about it. The mistake a lot of marketers make is to think they can just promote their product and that the news outlet is going to be happy to write about it and essentially provide them with free exposure. Now this is not how it works. Like you, magazines and websites are predominantly interested in providing value to their readers, so they'll only tell your story if it's genuinely interesting or exciting. So ask yourself, how can you make your brand something people will be interested in reading about? A publicity stunt is one answer, doing something completely unique is another. Rather than targeting big blogs though, why not consider targeting the smaller influencers? These are individual bloggers, YouTubers, social media stars and the like who have thousands or even millions of followers. If you can convince them to give you a shout out, you can sponsor them to do this, give them something for free or exchange favors, then that can give you instant access to a gigantic audience and potentially transform your business overnight. Finally, no matter what strategies you're using in your internet marketing campaign, it is absolutely essential that you are regularly checking your stats and analytics to ensure that you're actually making progress. Look at how many visitors you're getting daily, 
look at which activities are bringing you the most customers and use this information to hone and improve your campaign over time. There are several different tools that you can use to do all this, but by far the most popular and capable is Google Analytics. If you're serious about internet marketing, then the two of you need to get acquainted. This video series has thrown a lot of information at you all at once, and there's still more to learn. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. Internet marketing is a huge subject, and you will never have learned everything. Moreover, it's also a subject that is continually changing and evolving, so you'll never know absolutely everything that there is to know. But what this series has hopefully done is to a give you a solid foundation of knowledge to get started, and b help you to make some smart decisions and avoid some of the biggest mistakes that new marketers make. The biggest lesson I want you to take home from all this is that you should work smart, not hard. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be putting out a load of dross, though. Far from it. The key to getting easy wins is to create things people actually want to see and want to share. Content Google wants its users to find, and content that will build trust and authority with your followers. This means writing about subjects you're passionate about, and it means bringing something genuinely different and unique to the table, and it means creating a stunning website with glorious images and a strong brand. Good SEO and good marketing means telling amazing stories and creating amazing content. And I wish you every success.